Welcome all to the 2019 Civil and Environmental Engineering Graduation Ceremony. I am Laura Lowe's. I am the chair of the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department, and I am thrilled to be here to uh, congratulate all of our graduates this year. As we get started, I have been told that we are at capacity today and that there are still a few people that don't have seats. So if there's an empty seat by you that's somewhere in the middle, uh, raise your hand and maybe squish over and we'll see if we can find a couple more people to, to fit in. Also, it is a warm day as it usually is on graduation and if you feel the need to uh, move away from the crowd, we are actually live streaming in room 250, which is over here. So if you want to take a break, I don't think anybody will jump into your seat. Uh, please feel free to do so. There's some water and refreshments there as well. As we get started, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to acknowledge all the contributions of people that helped our graduates to get here today. Behind me are members of the Civil and Environmental Engineering faculty. They are internationally recognized researchers, gifted teachers, and dedicated mentors. While I know that you graduates worked very, very hard, sacrificed a lot to be here. I'm sure that you had some help from these individuals. <laughs> so I would ask you to uh, give a good round of applause for your faculty. <laughs> Please be seated so that you do not have to stand for the next two and a half hours. Oh, actually not you, but that's okay. Faculty. <laughs> you guys are all sitting now. That's cool. <laughs> Located around the room are CEE staff and advisors. Maybe you could raise your hand, CEE staff and advisors. Again, I'm sure that you had a little bit of help from CEE staff and advisors while you were here whether it was uh, reviewing your transcript, helping you find that one last credit you needed, helping you get into that class that you had to get into, or just helping you get your computer fixed. So big round of applause for our CEE faculty, or staff and advisors. Today, we are particularly excited to be celebrating the graduation of our first cohort of BSNV students. These are not necessarily students who are the envy of their peers, but students who will receive a bachelor's degree in environmental engineering, thus the BSNVE. This degree program was created to meet student demand for an engineering degree with its emphasis on design, as well as significant content in the environmental sciences. The new degree program would not have been possible without many, many hours of work from environmental engineering and water resources faculty. In particular, I'd like to single out Mike Dodd and Heidi Goff, who are both here today. Thank you very much for your contributions. <laughs> but beyond just faculty, our advisors did an enormous amount of work as well, in particular, Mariko Navin and Brian Kinnear. And I would say just one last round of applause for getting this BSNV degree off the ground because it was a big lift. And we are so excited to have all of our BSNV graduates this year. I remember my time as an undergraduate student here at University of Washington and as a graduate student at UC Berkeley uh, very fondly. They were some of the best times of my life, uh, but they were hard too, and I certainly would not be where I am today without my family, friends, and fathers. So, happy Father's Day. I'm going to have to go back and tell my dad that I was choking up about that. <laughs> he always say, you can't cry as an engineer. Anyway, um, there's one more group in the audience that I'd like to recognize. For the last few years, we've been inviting our 
50-year reunion class to participate in our graduation ceremony, and I was lucky enough to have lunch with them earlier. At this time, I'd like to ask the class of 69 to rise. years ago, these gentlemen were in the same place that you are now, and they have gone on to tremendously successful professional degrees. Uh, I met with several of them this morning in many different areas, construction engineering, uh, transportation engineering, structural engineering, et cetera. So um, I would hope for you wonderful careers as they have had. As I said, I completed my degree at UW a number of years ago. We won't count. I'm not quite in the year class of 50-year uh, reunion yet, but... Um, I have really fond memories of those times, football games in the rain, skiing at Stevens Pass for 10 bucks, and very occasionally going to the College Inn. Unlike lift prices at Stevens Pass, the College Inn has not changed at all. Uh, I also have memories of spending time in the computer lab, which also has not changed, working late into the night with friends on homework assignments or by myself in the research lab leveling, and also, as came up today, leveling surveying equipment. While I say that the computer lab hasn't changed, the computers are better, and the surveying equipment is better. I understand that it is self-leveling surveying equipment. In fact, our advanced survey, surveying class employs LIDAR and UAV, so there have been some changes. Other changes are our new BSNV degree that I've talked about previously, and the new direct-to-college admission policy in which students can apply directly to the College of Engineering and are guaranteed placement in a department. Interestingly enough, as I was talking with our 50-year reunion class, they said, yeah, that's the way we did it before. That, that really worked. So we've uh, gone back to the past, right, or gone forward to the past. Um, we've also added some new features, and uh, one of the exciting things I think these days is the number of online degree programs we have, which provide a tremendous amount of flexibility, in particular for working students. And this year we just launched our third online degree program, which is the uh, MSCE in Engineering Infrastructure. I think another significant improvement and change through the years has been the number and breadth of opportunities for learning and advancing traditional engineering skills as well as communication, team building, et cetera, through out of class and out of classroom activities, um, including Engineers Without Borders. The UW chapter this year worked to design composting toilets for remote communities in Nicaragua, a covered marketplace, a soccer field drainage system, and a fish hatchery intake for a village in Guatemala. And here on the UW campus, solar power stations and educational displays for a rainwater recovery project. Way to go, EWB. <laughs> the ASC concrete canoe and steel bridge teams competed well this year. Uh, the CE teams worked to uh, refine designs and overcome multiple challenges during the competition phase. In particular, the concrete canoe team won the regional competition, making it to nationals, where they successfully completed a crash course in repair of concrete structures and produced a seaworthy canoe. Way to go. <laughs> we have student, many students who are participating in clubs that are not necessarily readily identified with civil engineering, although the UW um, Hyperloop competition should be. That's the, next, the future of uh, transportation. Uh, this year's team is ready to win the U U.S. pod design competition just as they did last year. Husky Robotics team includes a few uh, UW CE students, and they're participating in an international competition to build the next generation of Mars rover, again, a transportation system. And UW Solar includes a number of CEE students. Um, this year's projects included uh, new solar power charging stations and a solar panel arrays on existing buildings. One of the other really exciting features of civil and environmental engineering these days is the opportunity for study abroad. We have a study abroad program in India that a number of students participated in, a number of our graduates. We also have study abroad in Rome and Jordan and coming soon Indonesia and a second Rome class. So lots of opportunities to study civil engineering elsewhere in the world. And finally, internships and research assistantships. Goodness knows that almost all of our students participate in both. There can be no question that there are many, many new opportunities and that civil and environmental engineering is changing. 
That's my perspective on it. I think it would be nice to have a student's perspective as well. Each year we invite a student to speak at graduation and provide the student's perspective on civil and environmental engineering. This year, in recognition of our new BS Envy program, we will have two student speakers. Sarah Lucero, who's graduating with a BSCE degree, and Alex Ratcliffe, who's graduating with a BS Envy degree. Sarah, could you join me on stage? <laughs> Sarah, Sarah Lucero has accomplished much during her time at UW. Her studies focused on water resources and environmental engineering, and she was a research assistant in the Watershed Dynamics Group, presenting her research at the 2018 AGU Conference in Washington, D.C. She's currently working with Osborne Consulting on a stormwater management plan for Bellevue, but I understand that she enjoyed her time at UW so much that she will be back in 2020 for a master's degree. Um, she served as a College of Engineering peer educator, as vice president of the ASCE student chapter, helping to lead the chapter to a distinguished chapter, chapter award. Her accomplishments and contributions have been recognized by ASCE, which named her to the ASCE New Faces of Civil Engineering College Edition. By, she's been recognized also by CE faculty and by our colleagues with the honor of being one of today's speakers. With that, I will turn it over to Sarah, who has props. Thank you so much, Dr. Lowe's. Oh my gosh, okay. It's weird hearing all of your accomplishments like listed off like that. It's like, wow, did I actually do all of those things? Um, anyway, faculty, staff, family, friends, and loved ones, and the class of 2019, thank you for celebrating with us the hard-won degree that our students have been working towards today. Dr. Lowe's already mentioned this, but for any fathers or father figures in the room who are able to stand, I would like you to stand, please. I really wanted to say Happy Father's Day because what better gift from your child than a degree in engineering? <laughs> um, I wanted to thank all of the fathers and the father figures, specifically my dad who took the grueling two and a half hour drive from Vancouver, Washington to come see me speak today. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so I'd like to start with some gratitude and affirmation. So I invite the graduating class to take a deep breath with me. Inhale. Exhale. You made it. You, this is your day, this is your celebration, and I wanted you guys to take this moment to really take it all in before it, you know it's all over. I invite the guests, our families, friends, parents, and loved ones to take a deep breath with me. Inhale. Exhale. The student that you've been supporting to get this far has made it across the finish line, and they couldn't have done it with all of your support. Thank you so much. I invite the professors, where are they, right here, to take a deep breath with me. <laughs> Inhale, exhale. Um, grades are due on Tuesday, and a lot of people are counting on that for their graduation, so like, no pressure, but just, you'll, you'll get it done. <laughs> Starting your day with gratitude keeps the mind positive and reminds you that during really tough times, there are actually a lot of things to be grateful for. And I could stand here and tell you how grateful I am for my experience in this department, but I thought it would be helpful to get some feedback from the students themselves. So I asked a few students in the room what their favorite part of being in civil engineering was, and here was their response. For Christina, it was learning and exploring in Bangalore, India during her study abroad. For Daniel, it was completing the senior capstone with the good friends that he made in his major. For Christian, is being challenged by his research project and eating pancakes with the structures professors. And for Sophia, it was the crushing defeat that she served to her classmates when her team's concrete cylinder won the class competition. <laughs> one of the classes that the BSCE students are required to take, and some might consider their favorite one, is construction materials taught by Professor Mahoney. And while he loves to teach us about cementitious material, we learn something really special about concrete. Concrete is variable. You can change the amount of water 
aggregate, and cement that you add to change its strength, but you never really know its exact strength until you load test it, when you push its limits and you cause it to fail. So today, I brought with me a shard of concrete <laughs> that a group of students and I made in the class, and it used to be a lot bigger than this, as you may or may not know. But um, we broke it, and it turned out to be the strongest one in the class. And to maybe students or anyone who's not in civil engineering, it might seem counterintuitive that you break things that you don't really want to break. So I kept it with me to remind me of this, which is probably the most and only poetic thing about concrete. <laughs> you only know how strong it is when you break it, when you push it to its limits and you cause it to fail. Like concrete, we are all distinct individuals. It is nearly impossible to make one concrete cylinder exactly like another because there are a lot of variables. Also like concrete, we vary in our ability to resist failure. The strength of one could be a lot different than the strength of another. The concrete on the roads is loaded differently than the concrete in the parking structure. And when you shatter your concrete, like the one that I brought today, you objectively prove how strong it is. When you tell your journey of the time at UW, it can be decorated with awards, internships, fancy offices, or a post on LinkedIn. But it can also be celebrated with the failures, the sacrifices, and shortcomings that you met and you overcame. I asked more students what the worst part of their time in the department was, besides the dungeon. And here were their answers. For Matan, it was the nature of competition at the school and in the major. For Sophia, it was the fact that our building had an extremely disproportionate women's restroom compared to the men. <laughs> and for Jared, it was making life decisions that required compromise. These experiences reflect so much more about your academic journey because it demonstrates the 100 times that you tried rather than the one time that it took you to succeed. As Truman Capote was once accredited to saying, gosh, failure is the condiment that gives success its flavor. Some of us here today who took Professor Kaminsky's class, Construction and Developing Communities, were assigned to write a resume of our failures. This resume of failures was a self-defined collection of what we perceived to be our own failures and shortcomings. Abstractly, it could include the things that you didn't even try because you were afraid that you would fail. Students, I ask you to take a moment to think about what you would put on your resume of failures. Would it be a bad grade, a job you didn't apply to because you thought you wouldn't get it, a broken weld on a steel bridge? <laughs> What does it mean to be proud of your failures? Because employers might appreciate your honesty, but you can't always hand out a resume of your greatest failures and expect to get the job. From what I've seen, it will take time. You will fail, and it will hurt in the moment, but you will grow from it, because even the rotten tomatoes still fertilize the tomato garden. And if you look back at all of the times that you do fail, it will make those moments when you succeed so much sweeter. When I came to college, it was my dream to be a Husky and an engineer, just like my older sister. But before I had entered my junior year, I had been turned away from the College of, en college of Engineering three different times. And I knew that this was what I was meant to be doing, and I wouldn't let that rejection turn me away. And I ultimately made it off the wait list, and I joined the department that autumn. Because as the daughter of two immigrants from the Philippines, who strived to give me a life of better opportunities, I knew I had to get to this spot because they sacrificed so much for me to just have this chance. And now, two years later, I stand here at our graduation with the flag of my parents' country around my neck and I can tell this story to you now. One that spans a generation and did not come without difficulty. Within all of the loud voices in your head that tell you that you can't or you shouldn't do something, I hope that all it takes is a whisper of, I want this to silence it all. All of us here are different. Maybe you are a first generation college student like Sebastian. Maybe you moved here from the opposite side of the opposite corner of the country like Bryce, or you moved here from the opposite side of the world like Aaliyah. Or maybe you were told before that you didn't have what it took to get this engineering degree like Cassiano. Whatever the path you took to get here, I hope that you can be candid of your failures as well as proud of your success. 
and for the voices inside and outside of your head that tell you that you cannot succeed, well, I'll leave you with a quote, more, more or less paraphrased, from Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like your armor, and it can never be used to hurt you. Whether your time at UW has been short or long, we have all had our limits pushed and heavy loads on our shoulders. A lot of stress, you might say. Maybe you had some hairline cracking, but you made it here today strong. And I'm very, very proud to call you my friends, my colleagues, my mentors, my support system. Congratulations again to the class of 2019. We did it. Thank you, Sarah. That was wonderful. We have a second student speaker this afternoon as well, Alex Ratcliffe. While at UW, Alex focused his studies on environmental engineering and contributed as a research assistant to the Hydrobiogeochemistry Research Group. That's a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> he took on leadership roles within his fraternity. He served as vice president of UW Solar, helping to bring to fruition several solar projects on the campus. In recognition of his accomplishments and contributions at UW, as well as his passion and enthusiasm for advancing sustainability on the UW campus and beyond, he was selected as one of the Husky 100 and was awarded one of the highest honors within the College of Engineering, the College of Engineering's Dean Medal for Academic Excellence. Following today's festivities, Alex will travel to Iceland to tour geothermal plants and then return to Seattle to join PAE Consulting Engineers with responsibility for continuing some of the sustainability projects that he started on the UW campus. With that, I would ask Alex to join me on stage. Thank you, Laura. So, I have not prepared this speech before, and it is going to be tough to follow, Sarah. But I'm excited and hope to see where we end up with this. <laughs> uh, it's nice seeing so many familiar faces here and seeing my loved ones travel as far as they have to see me and celebrate with all of us. Um, I wish I got to know more of the civil engineering students before this year. I've been stuck with the same 14 group of environmental students for the last two years. And I have to say, you are all my best friends, and it is very hard to say goodbye to you after this time. Um, I want to give special thanks to Professors Heidi Goff and Professors Michael, Michael Dodd for leading the faculty in establishing the Environmental Engineering Program, as well as the advisors, um, Mariko Navin and Brian, for all of their support in getting the students to be successful in this program. It is very incredible that after two years, we've been able to establish such a successful program with brand new curriculum and act as the guinea pigs for all the professors, uh, <laughs> all the professors uh, doing their new courses. When I came to UW, I didn't know what I wanted to study. I actually came in as a comparative religion major, uh, trying to make the biggest difference that I, uh, trying to make the biggest difference possible. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to study, but I knew I wanted to maximize my potential. When I heard about the new BSNV program, I uh, wanted to be a part of something that was cutting edge. I wanted to be a part of something that was brand new. And with my passion for sustainability, I knew this was something that I could um, make a difference in. Uh, after two years of study, I'm amazed at how little I knew about environmental engineering before and about the importance of civil and environmental engineering in our world. Uh, CE engineers are perhaps the most vital engineers in society and are often the most overlooked and underappreciated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. The work we do can be taken for granted and is normally uh, taken as something that would be um, da, da, da. <laughs> things taken for granted and with few people outside of our industry truly understanding the impact that we make on our world. Um, how often do you think about how much civil engineers have impacted you? Every time you turn a faucet and receive clean drinking water, every time you throw away something in the uh, trash receptacle, every time you use a restroom, the electricity that flows to your houses, every time you take a walk on a sidewalk, every time you uh, drive on a road, the fact that we have clean air, the fact that our ecosystems are protected and can uh, provide 
recreational and commercial uses, everything has been touched by civil engineers. Everything we do, everything, every part of civilized life is somehow impacted by civil engineers. It is a noble profession with one clear goal, solve complex problems in order to improve people's lives, often without them being aware of it. And in the coming crisis, civil and environmental engineers will be more important than ever. I apologize for taking on a somber tone for the rest of this speech, um, given Sarah's great uh, talk of success, but this is something that's been on my mind for a long time and something that I do want to bring to the forefront. Climate change will be the greatest challenge that humanity has ever faced and ever, possibly ever will face. Through our coursework and our studies, every student graduating here has a uh, profound understanding of the causes and the consequences of climate change. As greenhouse gases, greenhouse gases continue to proliferate in the atmosphere, the planet will warm and we will be bear witness to the dire consequences. With half a degree of Celsius of increase, the southeast United States will continue to be battered by hurricanes, the western side of the country will continue to choke in wildfires, and sea levels will rise. There will be droughts, food shortages, but little action and few consequences. One degree Celsius, dramatic shifts in weather, less frequent rainstorms but more intense, increasing weathering and crippling our already failing infrastructure. Global water shortages, desertification, and um, global lacks of food. One and a half degrees. The Gulf Stream breaks down, ocean currents flow in different directions, marine life is significantly impacted, and um, the sh Mexico and the southern United States are shifted to a more tropical state. We see more mosquitoes, more disease, funguses that we've never impacted before, and many species go extinct. Two degrees, we hit the critical point. At this time, the permafrost in Alaska, Russia, and Canada will melt. Methane will be released in the atmosphere in unknown quantities, and we've established a positive feedback loop for which there's no return. Sorry, this is, yeah, we're getting very depressing. <laughs> Top layer of the ocean becomes acidic, and we lose our marine life. Two and a half degrees, the fertile crescent is reduced to a desert. The original seat of humanity is no longer habitable. Three degrees Celsius, two billion people are displaced from their areas in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, Central and South America, and all the island nations. Political uh, countries close their borders, there are crises across the land, and humanity as we see it ceases to exist. This is what we're facing. So what do we do? And semi-ironically, that is as far as I got in the speech. So there is no silver bullet for this. There is no way that one single thing will change what we're facing into the future. We're told that we do little things to change the world. We switch our lights to LEDs, we stop eating beef, we have all these minor behavioral changes that are somehow supposed to stop what's coming, the coming crisis. But that's not enough, it's not nearly enough. And yet, I stand here proud and excited for the future because I see every student here as being instrumental in what is gonna happen in the future. The students here are more prepared than anybody else in how we're gonna tackle this crisis because of the impact that civil engineers have on this world. We influence every economic se sector from transportation to industry, energy production, and construction. Incorporating sustainability, taking small changes in the way that we do things will dramatically affect the global system and can help prevent what the coming crisis. Challenge the status quo. The system that we have now is broken and new changes have to be made. The diploma that we will receive in about 10 to 15 minutes is much more than just a piece of paper. We're graduating from one of the best engineering departments in one of the top universities in the world. That is a major accomplishment. What comes with that is respect and esteem and an influence that many people will not have in their lifetime. When you join the workforce, when you sit in an office and are asked to design something, you're asked to give your opinion, your words carry more weight than almost anyone in that room. Take this opportunity. We have very limited time left to make a difference, but every person in this room has a duty to do so and has a responsibility and is prepared enough to do so. Again, I'm sorry for the somber attitude, but I do believe that this is a, a stepping stone for everyone in this room. I'm proud to be a part of the environmental engineering cohort and also proud to be a part of the civil environmental engineering. It was a grueling four years, 
with countless hours spent in the dungeon and even more spent in Odegaard trying to finish Professor Dodd's homework. <laughs> but it really has been an honor being here with all of you, and it's disappointing to see so many people leaving. And it's hardest goodbyes. I don't even know how to wrap this up. <laughs> Congratulations to everybody. Thank you to friends and family for traveling this long way, and thank you for listening to my half-baked speech. <laughs> Wow. Um, I'm going to say I'm very proud to have pro helped to produce two students like that. One more round of applause, wait, 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 for Alex helping to remind us of the import of civil and environmental engineering and the potential challenges that civil and environmental engineers will need to face and solve in the coming years. And for Sarah for reminding us of the inner strength that we have to meet those challenges. At this time, I would like to invite Anne and Neil Hawkins to join me on stage to present the Hawkins Prize to two more incredible CE students. Dr. Neil Hawkins was a CE professor for many years as well as chair of the department. In 1993, Anne and Neil endowed the Hawkins Prize to recognize outstanding CE graduates. The prize winners are chosen by the faculty based on their academic performance, communication abilities, and leadership. This year's second prize goes to, what's the name again? Kidding. Jordan Draghi. Jordan, would you please join us on stage to receive your prize? Jordan is graduating from the BS NV degree program with a cumulative UW GPA of 3.92. Jordan was described by a nominating faculty member as an outstanding student who is absolutely wonderful to have in class. Beyond the classroom, Jordan is a valued member of the UW rugby team and has participated in multiple engineering internships while a student at UW. This year's first prize goes to Tatsu Sweet. Unfortunately, Tatsu was in, unable to join us today. Tatsu is graduating from the BSCE degree program with a UW cumulative GPA of 3.96. That's pretty good, huh? While at UW, Tatsu completed two different undergraduate research projects in structural engineering and was awarded a Mary Gates Research Scholarship for one of these projects. Tatsu was described by a nominating faculty member as one of the smartest, most creative, and most pleasant to work with students I've ever met in my entire career. High praise. <laughs> and all of Tatsu's friends can give him a really bad time for not being here to accept this prize. <laughs> Each year, students are asked to nominate a professor for the Outstanding Teacher and Outstanding Faculty Mentor Awards. We did read through all of those responses to the surveys. Thank you very much. This year, the Outstanding Teacher Award goes to CE Professor and Associate Chair for Educational Affairs, Michael Brett. I would go through the list of uh, compliments from students, but it would take too long. The Outstanding Mentor Award goes to CEE Assistant Professor Mari Winkler. Professor Winkler was nominated for her mentoring of undergraduate and graduate students for creating a collaborative environment in her lab where everyone contributes and shares their experiences and for promoting the professional development of all lab members. 
Unfortunately, Professor Winkler could not be here to accept her award today either. She's traveling. The next award may not come as a surprise to many. Um, the chair also has the uh, authority to provide a chair's award each year. And this year I decided that the chair's award would go to Associate Professor Mike Dodd for his service to the department in contributing to the development of the BSNV program, but also his con contributions to our ABET accreditation process and his role on the College Council of Education Policy. Uh, I believe that the entire faculty will agree with me that Mike Dodd has done above and beyond his call of duty with respect to service. So congratulations to Mike Dodd. One final award, and this person is here. Uh, this year, the Chair's Award for Service goes also to undergraduate advisor Mariko Navin for her many years of service to the department and to CE students. Mariko, if you could join me on stage. There were people responsible for making sure she'd be here. it. Those were all my awards that I get to cho choose for this year. You'll have to come back next year for more Chair's Awards. Uh, the, this phase of our ceremony, our uh, graduation ceremony, will end and conclude with our keynote speaker, John Terezi. During your time at UW, C faculty and staff have done their utmost to provide you with the knowledge and skills you will need to successfully begin the next phase of your professional lives. Uh, regardless of what you are doing in this next phase, whether it's professional practice, research, or working at Amazon, hopefully you will find that the next phase brings many, many opportunities to take on new challenges, gain new knowledge, and develop new skills. There can be no doubt that our speaker's career path provided many, many opportunities to take on new challenges and gain new knowledge and skills. CEE adjunct professor and retired chief financial officer for KPFF Consulting Engineers, John Terezi, completed bachelor's and master's degrees in civil engineering with an emphasis on structural engineering and mechanics at Cornell University. He spent six years working as a structural engineer for Boeing. I'm sure we have at least a couple grads who are going to Boeing. And then, following a passion for business, completed an MBA at the UW Foster School of Business. He joined KPFF, a civil structural engineering firm, and helped KPFF, KPFF grow from less than 100 people to more than 1,000 people today. While contributing to development of the business side of KPFF, John continued to contribute also to KPFF's structural engineering practice, developing expertise in the area of reinforced masonry design and building curtain walls during his more than 40 years of professional practice. John's leadership was not limited to KPFF. He was instrumental in the formation of the Masonry Society and, and served as his president and editor of the Masonry Society Journal for many years. He served as presidents of the president of the Structural Engineers Risk Management Council and the Structural Engineering Institute of the American Society of Civil Engineers. He's also a member of ASC 7, which is the main code writing committee um, and writes the codes that um, enable us to design buildings uh, in the U.S. and uh, other places around the world. In recent years, CE has been lucky enough to uh, take advantage of his expertise, and he's been teaching our masonry design class to seniors for many, many years. Please welcome, join me in welcoming John Terezi to the stage and taking advantage of this opportunity to learn something new about engineering. Brights are light. Brights. <laughs> it's a big group. Uh, thank you, Laurel. Uh, thank you uh, to the uh, staff, professors, 
of the great school of uh, civil and environmental engineering here at the University of Washington. Uh, congratulations for another crop of civil engineers and environmental engineers for the first time. Uh, the University of Washington is ranked uh, 16th in the nation uh, for civil engineering schools, and uh, it should be higher. I think it is higher. Um, and <clears throat> you, uh, staff and, and teachers, don't get enough credit for what you do. Uh, as an adjunct, I, the, my first uh, class uh, was in 1984. So if you do the math, it, it's been 35 years as an adjunct. And um, when I started, I knew nothing about teaching. I was uh, knew a lot about engineering, of course, but uh, teaching was a skill that uh, evolved over time, and uh, I learned a lot of lessons the hard way. And uh, you really don't have a full appreciation for the skill and knowledge of teaching unless you've gone through and uh, and done it extensively. So <clears throat> I would like you uh, students to stand and give all your professors another hand of applause for what they do. <laughs> so Laurel called me uh, and asked if I would do this uh, presentation uh, I was a little apprehensive when I got the call. I, I, the first reaction was, why me? And the second reaction was, no. <laughs> and, then, and then I thought that, uh, you know, that, it, what a big opportunity. What an honor to be able to talk to all of you today. Uh, I was uh, still quite apprehensive. And so, uh, actually, I was at the Structured Congress down in Orlando when the call came through. And I... I asked Laurel for a day to think about it, and uh, she said, okay. So I had a day to think about it. I was sure that others could do a better job of uh, speaking about uh, to you today, and uh, but there's one thing I'm sure uh, that I am good at, and uh, I'm in the running for probably the best. I believe in our profession of civil engineering. I think it is the greatest thing that anybody can do. And uh, for that reason, I... Uh, uh, thought that, uh, well, maybe I could do it. Um, but I was still undecided in being an engineer. Uh, I thought, well, as an engineer, before I make this decision, I need more data. <laughs> so I called up my son-in-law, who uh, graduated from the um, uh, University of Washington in 2005. And I, I had two questions for Kyle. I said, the first question is, Kyle, uh, do you remember who gave your commencement address? And there was a long pause, and he said, no. <laughs> and then I said, do you remember anything that that person who gave that address said? And again, a long pause, and he said, no. <laughs> and that was sufficient data to think that maybe I could do this. <laughs> So that kind of led into an, a, kind of the message of this presentation, but uh, one of the things that you, that you know and it's already been talked about is how uh, great civil engineering is and how uh, much it touches everybody's lives and is so important to civilization. But the message for this uh, talk today uh, is really uh, we do great things. Uh, they're really terrific, and but you won't get recognized. But do it anyway. Okay. And <clears throat> so, congratulations, congratulations to for the, all the hard work, the years of effort, uh, sleepless nights, and um, trips to the emergency room probably and to more than 20 years of hard work. Students and graduates, I'd like you to stand and give your parents a hand.
I'm sure they're very proud of you today and will be for many years to come. How many parents in the room are engineers? Raise your hand. I can't really see. Uh, hopefully, there are, <laughs> hopefully there are a few out there. <laughs> I do have to brag a little bit now because uh, I have three children. Two of them are undergraduate engineers and one of them married one. I also have to uh, be proud that today is my 51st, 51st wedding anniversary. My wife Alice is here. And we've actually been married for 51 years in about three hours now. Although, you know, they didn't actually time when you said, well, I do. But, but, all right. So. Students and graduates, congratulations. Uh, you have learned a new way of thinking, uh, and it's important. It's, it's, uh, maybe, maybe you had it all along, but I'm sure it was amplified uh, when you uh, uh, went through the education process here. Uh, engineering is special. I, I view engineering as today's modern version of the past liberal arts education that undergraduate engineers are more prepared to learn and contribute to society than uh, the liberal arts education provides. And <laughs> so there is some data with that regard. Uh, law schools today give preference to engineers entering law school. Did you know that 33% of the CEOs of the Fortune 500 have undergraduate engineering degrees? How many knew that? Probably didn't know that. Only 11% have undergraduate business degrees. And even more exciting, only 10% of them came from Ivy League schools. <laughs> so <laughs> we are recognized, but not directly, okay? So don't expect society to recognize what you do. Enjoy what you do and do it. This is probably because they don't understand what we do. Uh, when you turn on the water tap and clean water comes out, uh, there isn't a knowledge of everything that goes in for that to happen. So <laughs> how many are familiar with the finite element analysis method? <laughs> come on, <laughs> all of you are. <laughs> all right. For those of you who aren't, it's a process of taking a very large problem and knocking it down into a very small problem that can be solved and then adding it all back together to solve the big problem. The inventor was uh, Ray Clough. Uh, he published a paper in 1960 entitled Finite Element Method in Plain Stress Analysis. It was presented at the ASCE conference on, second conference on electronic computation in 1960 in Pittsburgh. At that time, there was an IBM 701 vacuum tube computer that could solve 40 simultaneous equations. And the first use of this uh, plain stress finite element analysis was on a dam structure. When I, I came to Boeing uh, in 1968, uh, we had two CDC 6600s back to back and we're solving 10,000 simultaneous equations to design the wing and the fuselage of the SST. Ray Clef died two years ago. There was no notice, no mention, no recognition. But you know something? I don't think he cared because he knew what he did. He knew the contribution that he made. And that's the message is just do it. Society has many issues to deal with today. You heard some of, the, uh, some of them in the previous speaker. But if you're going to build a dam and a powerhouse, you need a civil engineer. If you're going to take out a dam and turn it back to nature, you need a civil engineer. <laughs> civil engineers touch every part of our lives. If sea level rises, you're going to need a civil engineer. There are not many... Uh, engineers in 
running for public, civil engineers running for public office or in public office. And um, I think maybe the reason for that is because we are trained to solve problems. Again, no recognition. Enjoy what you do. It took me some time to learn this. Uh, I, actually, I, I kind of learned it. I wasn't going to tell the story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. I, down at Boeing, there's a, um, you know, there's a sea of engineers in cubicles, and, and, um, and uh, I don't know, there were three, 400 of us in, in one large room. And I was uh, uh, just out of school and, and company, I, but I, I was doing great work. I, I had invented a, uh, the, um, an analysis to analyze titanium integrally stiffened skins under uh, action of thermal gradient and compression. And uh, that particular technology was going to be used on the, um, on the SST. It, it actually got used on the uh, B1. Uh, but I was getting no recognition. And it was really distressing. Um, and uh, so one day I thought, well, maybe it's because the name Teresi is really kind of hard to recognize and whatnot. And, and uh, so anyway, I uh, decided to begin to page myself on the telephone. <laughs> so I call up the operator, and, and it would be uh, Teresi, line one, John Teresi, line two. And I thought people would get used to the name, you know, so maybe. A little later on, somebody came by and said, you get a lot of phone calls. Are you having trouble doing work? <laughs> it was a lesson hard to learn. Yeah. You have many skills that will be used in many different directions. So it's going to be difficult out in the real world to adjust to it, but be confident in what you do. Uh, be confident and be self-actuated as to the contribution that you're making. Now, in preparing this talk, I did look at some other ideas and some other advice. And I didn't want to leave them out, so I thought I'd just list them for you. Uh, you have you ready to take notes on this? <laughs> right. Follow your passion. Okay, that's a Steve Jobs. Uh, but there's a a little bit more to that. If your passion is video games, don't do them, design them. If your passion is travel, you know, work on a spaceship to Mars, okay, follow your passions, okay. Stay humble and keep your ego in check. Take extreme ownership in everything. Don't blame others, just fix it. That fits, right? Solve problems. Be the light at somebody's. Be the light of somebody else's darkness by being rational and strong. It doesn't always work, but when it does, it works really well. Okay. When you have a problem to solve, the first thing to do is do not go to Google. Okay. Think about what the problem's about. You've been trained and you know how to do it. Procrastination is the secret to success. Well, that doesn't really quite fit into an engineering one, but I had to put that in. And the reason is I managed a lot of engineers, and it works because engineers solve their own problems. So if you delay, they'll figure it out and solve it for themselves. <laughs> so if you're managing an engineering firm, it's procrastination is the secret to success. Ask for help. You'll likely need it. Admit to mistakes and learn. This is only the beginning of your learning, by the way. It never stops. Be intellectually curious. Thoroughness correlates directly to success in civil engineering. Be thorough. Help others succeed. Okay. Talk to your parents. They know a lot. Okay. Uh, last one. Uh, at KPFF, they're tired of hearing me say this. It's ready, fire, aim. Okay. Do something. Okay. There's a corollary to it. 
the corollary is what I call memory forward or uh, thinking about the future. So if you're going to do something, then think about all the possible outcomes and consequences, and then be prepared to deal with any one of them. So ready, fire, aim, but do something. Don't stand there and wait. That's a lot of advice, and I hope you remember some of it. Maybe no recognition, maybe ready, fire, aim. But one thing I do want you to remember, this is the one thing, is who gave this commencement address. <laughs> The name is John Teresi. It's spelled T-A-W-R-E-S-E-Y. Okay. Congratulations to class of 2019. I wish you all the happiness and enjoyment of our wonderful profession. Thank you. Thank you, John, for your thoughts, advice. Faculty, if I haven't gotten back to you, I'm following his advice. Procrastinating, you'll solve it yourself. <laughs> to all of you civil and environmental engineers, I would like you to take away from this what I'm going to call the call to arms. We really do need more civil and environmental engineers in government. Just a thought. Maybe we can solve problems. And with, the nat with that, we will now recognize the graduating class of 2019. I would first like to present the 2019 Bachelor of Science degree candidates. Will all Bachelor of Science candidates please stand one row at a time and approach the stage in a single file. Uh, let's see, where's the first row? Okay. Okay, I'm just reading the script. Joe Zacharin. Seth Gottlieb. Hosanna Nagash. Evan Ponto. Nick Morrow. Adam Mokalalate. Mary Lynn Kutralakis. Peter Stossel. Tyler Cartwright. Martin Espinosa. Haley Stensley. Louis Michael Lopez. Henry Weigand. Sophia Essie Morgan. Joey Zhao.
Cassiano Samir Atienza III. Christopher Chevalier Leon Adams. Joseph Kim. Jaying Wang. Yen Yen Chen. Xing Su. Xiaomeng Zhan. Yang Hong Huang. Jenny Fu. Sebastian Quintana. Jenna Louie. Bryce Frischer. Alexander Schwartz. Jason Wells. Tess Pietro. Lexi Navarre. Sarah Lucero. Luca Kim. Cody Philly. Tyler Wilcox. Mac Cahoon. Brenda Velasquez Lopez. Luis Luna. Tao Nguyen. Matan Belovsky. Kellen Bowers. Victor Mock. Prong Huynh. Ruben Wiyukusama. Jonathan Miles. Diana Friedman. Magdalene Page. Alexander Rempe. Joseph Wallets. Kyle Coit. Alexander Wong. Matthew Buscelli. Benjamin Belushi. Gareth Grindeland. Noor Amalina Zazali. Carmen Hom. Aliyah Amaz Azni Shah. Mackenzie Faulkner. Maeve Harris. Nicole Wong. Wen Long Guan. Sam Demers. Jacob Bernardi. Giovanni Inouye. Olivia Shen. Hannah Peterson. Chloe Coughlin. Kylie Ramp. Carl Larson. 
Cody Sanders. Michael Dyer. Melvin Wiley Fisher III. Sam LaPella. Sydney Hutchison. Amber Hall. Parker Johnson. Benjamin Long. Brendan Stamper. Jared McMean. Arthur Shirley. Show Miao Zen. Zachary Sanato. Sam Rickard. Xiao Dong Lu. Holt Ogden. Kai Liu. Kenneth Ray Joven. Timothy Angelos. Daniel Nathan Wu. Adam Novacek. Aliyah Abashima. Hirad Shadadfard. Drayden Hansler. Karina Tran. Brian Webster. Stephen Tuttle. Matthew Huang. Keith Sungale. Joshua Shin. Sam Torset. Chris Holomek. Austin Ryan Anderson. Aaron Emoto. Wes Sharoma. Tyler A. Midkiff. Levy Moore. Helena Goobles. Fatima Zara Bentaleb. Tyler Hager. Rowan Lee. Brittany Kwan. Kai Sing Lei. Juni Ye. Alexander Lang. Joshua Bogard. Lionel Mizero. Reed Lewis. <laughs> Rami Sabra. Jacopo Spano. Katarina Gomazova.
So that seemed like an awful lot of BS degrees, but we still have a few more to go. Please join me in congratulating the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Engineering. Zhaosheng Wang. Tyler Oshiro. Jordan Druggy. Gavin Clockman. Alexander M. Ratcliffe. James Tran. Christian Linfoot. Leanne Nguyen. Riku Kusukabe. Hendrik Ufkus. Ashley Han. Christina Lopez. Casey Medill. And next. We will first recognize the Master of Science in Civil Engineering candidates. The Master of Science uh, in Civil Engineering degree program provides expertise in one of five areas of civil engineering, either entirely through coursework or through coursework and research. So these are all of our MSCE grads for 2019. Jacob Sumeral. Tasha Tardier. Max Mentola. Ann Magnus. Gloria de Zamacona Cervantes. Christopher Gottsacker. Juan Higuera. Akshat Kedar. Anjanai Ne Patel. Yash Chowdhury. Niravan Chandresan. Ryan Rasanan. Amber Ganapathe. Angelica Johanna Sanchez Nunez. Margaret Honek. Maxwell Armenta. Yeah, B. Scout Danger Heck. Christian Niederkorn. Spencer Morris. Sarah Burquist. Mitchell Gordon. Kelsey Martin. Andrew Nakahara. Daniel Yunhan B. Reed Askin. Alvin Nguyen. Adam Mutar. Lawrence Tykes. Joseph Jesse. Eric Hoddenham. Hao Chong. Hao 
Lynn. Christy Young. Steven Pastana. Ariana Frender. Medhanai Embani. Anurag Jain. Shivang Gupta. Michelle Horio. Catherine Quach. Aaron Miller. Philip Yu. Josiah Adeyemo. Rene Hurtado. We will now recognize the Master of Supply Chain Transportation and Logistics candidates. The Supply Chain Transportation and Logistics Master's Program is a two-year part-time degree program for working professionals that provides students with the knowledge and skills required to contribute to this hugely critical and rapidly changing field. Professor Ann Goodchild, director of this program, will join me on stage to congratulate these graduates. Maria Hernandez. Vanessa Rivera Vasquez. Sergey Adigator Eri. Sorry, Sergey. Uso Dostovic. Dustin Doyle. Gustavo Danero. Stephanie Mulan. Dane Schmick. Olivia Larson Marinoni. Godfrey Singsong Reboa. Douglas Dickey. Christopher Johnson. Bert Goodman. T. Toe. Daniela Yancheva. We will now recognize the Master of Sustainable Transportation. Uh, the Sustainable Transportation Master's Program is an online degree program that provides students with the knowledge and skills required to develop innovative and sustainable solutions to today's transportation challenges. So right there, that's a challenge for a master's degree program. But we know that you students, graduates, are going to go out and solve the transportation problems if only we had more civil engineers in government, right? <laughs> Please join me in congratulating these students as they come on stage. And I will introduce uh, Professor Ed McCormick, director of this program, who will also congratulate the graduates as they come on stage. Bradley Weed. <laughs> Christopher Rhodes. Edward Perzanowski. Brenda K. Muth. Alex Main. Alex Litchfield. Melody Lynn. Bennett Hall.
we will now recognize the PhD graduates. I would ask the CEE faculty to please join me on stage. I think all of our graduates have worked incredibly hard to get where they are today. Uh, for those of you that have participated in research as a undergraduate student or a graduate student, or I should say as a master's student, you will know that research is particularly challenging because there isn't always an end or an obvious or a goal where you say you're done. And so I think that's one thing that makes a PhD very, very challenging is it's not always clear when you have finished your degree. So. Uh, it is a significant moment to walk on stage and be hooded in recognition of the many hours and years of work that you put in on this degree. Marcy, Car Marcy Carmen Carrera Paris. Flores Oliver. <laughs> Roxanne Carini. Madison Smith. <laughs> Nicholas Waldo. Sai Nudurupati. Yi Shen Mao.
Bruce Bay Dabouli. Anju Kim. Wenbow Drew. Wan Lee. Zeeb Sadiqui. Miriam Hacker. Lee Allison. James Farrako.
Brian Howell. Julian Yamaura. No more room on the stage. Uh, you will note that our PhD graduates have taken their rightful place with the CEE faculty. So one more round of applause for all of these incredible <laughs> graduates. You'll have to clap a few more times. Uh, I think some of our faculty may also be graduating their first PhD students. So a round of applause for those faculty who graduated their first PhD. <laughs> and then if I could have all of the graduates stand. Congratulations. Okay, hat toss, one, two, three. Please join us in continuing the celebration at either end of the ballroom. And congratulations to everyone. Remember, careers in politics. <laughs>